Oh, like, that shit's hilarious. Like, like, have we done it, dude? That shit's hilarious. Done it. My guy <laughs> is here. Uh, why are we letting 49er fans in here? Ah. <laughs> start. What's up, you What's look up, bigger in person, dog. I look shorter in person, I bet you too. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, man. I see the chest at Cisco. Hi, Ashley. Nice to meet you. So, welcome back to a Tussle Light podcast, the most authentic, most organic podcast out here. So, let's go. Do it. And, man, this is so crazy. We're actually sitting here with a phenom. Ah, no, 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 no. <laughs> a, a content creator that is, in all honesty, is changing the world is by one video. Being authentically yourself, you, your wife, your life. But we got in the house, Mr. Francisco. Cisco in the house, baby. Yes, sir. That was a really good intro. Really Thank good you. Intro. He's good at that. We're trying. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, trying. Really good at that. Tone it down, man. I'm not that big yet. No. Come on now. <laughs> We're trying to give you the flowers, bro. I know, We're trying to right? give you the Thank you. Thank you. I mean, and then filling in, too, because my guy came alone today. But, you know, shout out to his wife. Yes, yes. You got to give a shout out to his shout wife. Shout out to the wife, to the wife, Sakina Samara, my baby she, girl. There it is. Yeah, yeah. we got to give it up. She couldn't make it. You know, she tried making it, but, you know, that mom life is it's tough. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. But filling in, we got Mr. Dylan in the house, baby. I like Dylan. Yeah, Dylan. There was a server. And then be my wife today, all right? <laughs> That's you, Dylan. Man, how are you doing? I'm doing very good, man. Busy, but very good. It's hot in LA, but I'm doing very, very good. Uh, how, what are you doing to stay cool? <sighs> Drinking a little bit of these dad. Uh, what are these? Some happy dads. Happy dads. Happy dads. Happy dads. We're out here. Yeah, you guys have good hospitality here, man. You it's because I don't want you to come and be like, Estos güeyes no tenían nada yeah, tomar, I, I, no I nothing. No, not even the water. They, they got me walking a mile <laughs> and stuff. I'm paying $24 for parking just to come. You know, but I love oh, Dylan, it. Dylan got parking. Oh, you got parking, Dylan? Oh, hell it's yeah. It's all right. Yeah, man. Dylan Don't got parking. So oh, he got validation like that? The, I'm your wifey for the day. Oh, right. shit, bro. Let's go. You know, look, you step ahead because my wife would definitely not offer to pay no parking for she me. She'd be like, are you serious? No, yeah, exactly. It'll be, <laughs> you yes, want me? Yeah, I did, to, one time I asked for, for gas money and she looked at me and I was just playing. I would just see her reaction. Like, can I get some gas money? <laughs> Oh, man, boy. <laughs> oh, man. I almost I, lost my head. This is your first podcast. This is definitely my first, like, podcast like this. Setting. This is amazing. Setting, amazing. Hell this yeah. is crazy. This is good. I love it. Oh, man. We blessed to have you here. Ah, so we're going to be here. We're going to get right into this. Let's do it. Let's go. Where did Francisco originate from? Meaning, uh, like, the oh, content? Nah. Where, where did you grow up? So, look, so check it out. So a lot of people don't know. I was actually born in Mexico. So... Uh, and I've gotten this a lot where they say, like, the way you talk, you know, and it, sometimes it comes off a little weird yeah, when yeah, I yeah. see comments or people, they, they're like, your, your, your vocabulary, the way you sound when you're talking in English is, is very perfect for you to be born in, you know, Mexico. But I was actually born in Guanajuato, Mexico. And, okay. um, yeah, so I'm from Guanajuato. Uh, Panza Verde, this is what they call us. Las Momias is what they call Las us, momias. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, my parents actually brought me down here when I was about a year, two years around there. Um, we, we crossed that border, baby. You know, we did it the right way before that wall started getting built. Where <laughs> <laughs> <Let's go. laughs> you could just walk right through. We, we walk right through with a birth certificate, you know. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name in the birth certificate? <laughs> that I don't know, man. I couldn't talk. I was too small, you know. <laughs> but, you know, we crossed the border, you know. And um, thankfully, because of the hard work of my grandma, so a little backstory on that, my grandfather actually will come to the United States to work. Mm. You know, there's the, I guess back in those days, and I'm, I, I still think it still happens now, they will bring, you know, people from Mexico to work in the fields out here. Yeah, they still do. Yeah, so they did it for so long that I, I somehow they, they got their, you know, their their permits to work here. So at some somehow my yeah. grandma was able to come down here and become a citizen. 
and she became a citizen, so she vouched for, you know, my family and the rest of our family, so I was able to become a United St- States of America citizen. That's fucking dope. Yeah, so I have I have my papers, so if you're hearing this right now, dog, you can't take me back. <laughs> I got my green I'm here card. to stay. Yeah, I'm here to stay, you know, and I'm yeah, contributing okay. in a good way. Ah, that's dope. And then what... Where did you grow up in here? So I grew up once. Uh, so that happened. So we grew. I actually grew up in Los Angeles. Okay. So I grew up in South LA, um, 30th between Maple and Maine, um, which is not too far from here, actually. He so walked I, here. He walked here. I, I walked here. You know, I stopped at, I stopped at the corner <laughs> and checked out some of my bro. folks. But the good thing now is that there's uh, electric scooters. Oh, yeah, yeah just sign them up. I don't know how to use it, dude. I thought about it when I was walking. I don't I'm know joking with you. I'm, I'm joking with you. Francisco. <laughs> no, I'm joking with you. I know how to use that scooter, man. <laughs> I just got the parking. I don't got the scooter. Bro. Just the parking, bro. <laughs> no, I took my card. <laughs> <laughs> so you grew up here in L.A. Yeah. How was your childhood? So everybody listening in, they're going to be super ecstatic to finally hear where you came from, you know, your upbringing. So how was your, your upbringing here once you guys moved here? So as far as I remember, right, so we obviously migrated over here. We we lived at a family member's house for a little bit till my family got situated. They got work or whatnot. Yeah. Once they were able to do that, then that's when we moved to where I grew up, 30th between Maple and Maine. Yeah. And um, actually, it, it was it was a good childhood as far as, like, friendships. Like, I grew up in a neighborhood with a lot of positive people in that's my dope. street. There was, I, I'm, I, and I, I'm still so close with these guys. I'm still, they're still my best friends, to be honest with you. We, I was five. My, my best friend, which was my next door neighbor, his yeah. Mike, um, he was six. So we were close in age. And from there, it was like 10 of us in that street, dude. And yeah. um, they're still really good friends to me. But, I mean, it was, in that aspect, it was a good childhood, right? Because I did have those friends and I yeah. did have those positive influences. But I did grow up. I, I didn't grow up in the best situation as far as household, right? So it was me. I, I have I had another, you know, my brother and my sister, my mom and my dad. And it was like a one bedroom. And we all kind of share that. And when you're small, you don't really realize, you know, that hardship, right? You know, yeah. where both parents are working, you know, they're they're loving and they're doing what they have to do to, you know, put, you know, play in the food, right? That's you know, in a you know, put food in the yeah, plate, what they definitely. say. And um, but you know, besides all that, you know, struggle, it's like I I don't have bad memories. You know what I mean? Yeah. In that aspect, because I did have those friends and those positive relationships in my life. So would you say your mentality throughout growing up was just a positive mentality? Po- positive mindset, like, you know, it, like, yeah, I'm like surrounded. At a, at a really early age, it was yeah. a positive. But then as you start getting older, I mean, if you're looking at the streets that I grew up, I was around a lot of, like, uh, bad influence as far as gang members, right? So yeah. there was gangs all through that area. And um, I was just lucky that I grew up in the perfect street where that street Gosh. wasn't, you know, um, gang infested with people, right? That I kind of went down the wrong road. I had other people that were into sports, so that's how I got into sports. You know, other you know people that were a little older than me that kind of took care of us, and also like you know, in front of my house, it was like a little duplex, like a fourplex actually, four houses. And in front of the house, you, if you drive through that house, you see a bunch of borrachos, dude. <laughs> And, and anybody that doesn't know, you'll look and they're like, damn, look at that house. Like, yeah. there's 10 old, old guys <laughs> drinking and there's, you know, families walking in and out. Yeah. But those people that were in the front of the house, which they also lived around in that street, you know, they took care of us. You know, they, they just like to drink. That's all it was. You know, they're just drinking and having a good time. Probably not working, you know, now that I think about it. <laughs> <laughs> they were there a little they, too long. They, no, they didn't have a job. Yeah. But, you know, they took care of us. They washed out for us, right? Like, we're in the middle of the street playing tag. And that's that was my childhood, playing tag in the middle of the street. That was dope. Freeze yeah, tag, was, huh? Yeah. Catch me, get me, From get corner, me. To corner to corner. Corner <laughs> to corner. You make, you make that eye contact with them over there. Uh, like, there there okay. was an abandoned house. And we would go inside that. It, 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 we would go inside that abandoned house. And we would even play in there till it got burned down. Then somebody <laughs> went in there and threw a cigarette. Damn. The house burned down, dog. Like, oh, that house was, shit. the house, but check it out. This is how beautiful my childhood was. The house burned down, right? Nobody lived there. It was abandoned. Uh, so then they knocked the whole house down. They clear it up, and now it becomes like a valdio. That's how they will call it, right? Like a, a valdio. There was two of those valdios in my neighborhood, uh-huh. and we would play soccer there. So now we had oh, this. Yeah, we had this empty lot. Dylan right? used to play with no shoes. Oh, he Fuck looks yeah, like dude. it, dude. He looks like he did, dude. I bet you don't want to see his toes, dog. No, you do not want to see his it's toes. Gonna, it's gonna be like a what is it? Um, Happy Gilmore. Happy Gilmore. <laughs> the toes out. The foot. The foot is all black. Hit that shit. You ain't feel nothing. He used to call him Flintstone, dog. 
Yeah. yeah. They, they call you Fred Flintstone, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was, <laughs> nah, I love yeah, Dylan. But, but that's how it was, you know, playing soccer, right? Like competition between the older guys, the young guys, football. Yeah. So that was kind of like my childhood as far as like. So what's your best memory of in your childhood? Like that uh, you right now when you, you can think about it randomly and be like, damn, bro, that was dope. I, honestly, it would be the freeze tag, right? Like when we would play freeze tag and it was Friday. So it, it, it was always Friday nights, right? Like, because I mean, my mom, they both work. So they were very flexible, dude, with me. Like I wouldn't go inside the house to like eight or nine o'clock at night. And they, they weren't looking for me either. I was just somewhere out there. They just, you know, I got to come uh, yeah. back in. Well, are you a middle child? Are you the middle child? Uh, yeah, you could say that. Yeah, okay. yeah they, didn't care about, they didn't care about you. They, yeah, no, they sure didn't. Same thing with me, brother. That's yeah, why I'm here. I'm a middle That's child. I'm, here. I'm a middle child. Middle child. Middle child. The oldest? Okay. He's, he's a mature one. Yeah. He's a desmadre. <laughs> middle? Bro, we're all the middle child. That's why we're all in a circle here, dude. Yeah. You're at it. Hey, bro, there's a door. You got to go out. <laughs> Only middle child's allowed. Hey, start J. Cole, middle child. Hey. 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 You're taking care of us, dog. But, um, <laughs> Thanks, daddy. <laughs> Might as well. <laughs> I think, like you said, you grew up in, in you can say the barrio. Right. Yeah. The hood. I think that's what kept, and I kind of I kind of relate to you. That's what kept you and me off of gangs, off the streets. You can say, yeah, is the friendships, the the late night soccer matches we had with our friends, you know, and it goes back to our culture, our family, where it's like the kid las nueve aquí, you know, right, and yeah. it's like you have to be home at night because if not, you're gonna get your ass whooped. Yeah, as soon as you walk into that door, oh, yeah. the hands waiting. Yes. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Was, with the is, oh, yeah. Pásale. But it's still, like right now, you can't even hit your kid because you get caught. Oh no, you have DCFS right outside the house. <laughs> <laughs> the minute hey, the hand goes up, hey, your own kid calls him. Yeah, your own kid is gonna call him. No, but he's spot on, dude. Because see, like that's how it was, right? So they gave me the freedom and the flexibility. But my dad, my dad was a cowboy dad, dude, like a straight oh. paisa. like, like he was, he was the dad wearing a tejana. The Mexican boots, the big belt, like the big belt yeah. buckle. You oh, know, wanna, hey, Guanajuato? Yeah, no, he ain't played, dude. No, no, like, that's just was, real. Yeah, it was real. And, and and he missed his horse, so he would drive a bike. So he had a, <laughs> he would take me in a bike to school, you know? Like I went to, to <laughs> my school wasn't closed because my grandma would take care of me. So we would drive on a bike. He would take me in a bike in the, yeah. in the, in the little pedals. Once I got a little older, and he would take me all the way to school. Oh, little... in the back. In yeah. The oh, yeah. 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 Hey, low-key, I think that's a, a dope childhood when you're riding the bike, and you're with your homies, and, hey, we're going to go over here. Hey, hop on the pegs. Oh, yeah. Hop on the, hop pegs. On the pegs. Or yeah. if you didn't have pegs, hey, in the front in one. In the front? In the front. You're just... looking like E.T. and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes, bro. You're just sitting there. Yeah. yeah no, that's how it was. So, fast forwarding, you know, I, I do want to give the shout-out and the light also to – to your wife, yeah, you know, yeah. You when you guys started, when did you guys meet? So oh, I trip out on this, man. I'm gonna spin your world right now. So spin me. So check it out. So me and my wife, we we actually have um, how can I like a diary? You, you, you can be loud. Don't you worry. You can be loud. Don't worry about it. Girl. They're the happy days are all the way it, to the bottom. It, it's about to get really yeah. good. Hey, check. Just make sure it's still good. But it's about to get really good. That's what oh, we got to prepare. Or yeah. like a guy got fucking, you don't have to be like. This. All right. <laughs> Can I get one more too? Thank you. Thank you. Because you, this the conversation got interesting. Yeah, it's because he said he's gonna spin our world, and I'm I'm nervous. I get nervous fast. Yeah. Yeah. I get oh nervous no, it's fast, a, it's a beautiful bro. story, bro. You know, I, I get so nervous. I'm nervous for myself in a sense, like yo, no la quiero cagar. No, why? that's my thing. No, no, you know what no, I'm saying? No, so no. before you got here, I was like. She was like, you good? I was like, nah, bro, I want to. This I is, no, it's going good, bro. So we're, You're good. So Take we're, a little bit more. Hold on. Thank you. <laughs> I th the nervous hey. one was supposed to be him. I, I was know. Like, yeah, da, 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 you're good. I said, we're with the phenom, that, bro. That, we're with the, the celebrity. That, what was that, 1945? <laughs> 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 we no, there he goes. You got to take another one so it could kick in. Yeah. Right after See, this story. I, didn't, I didn't eat. So that's why it already kicked in. Oh, it bro, that's, we, that's we the haven't secret. Ate. No, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah but secret. it's we're vamos para largo nosotros. Oh yeah, no, yeah. I'm we're, just, we're we got invited to the after party after the podcast. You know, not everybody. <laughs> nah, <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> but the truck over there and shit. <laughs> well, let's get started. So, meeting your wife, how did that happen? Because we all see the videos. Right. Everybody that's watching sees the videos. They're gonna be like, "Damn, bro, they have that relationship that is funny." Authentic, but damn. And, and how did he get Special. a white girl? And, and, and a lot of people, how the hell did this little how Mexican did you do dude it, okay? get a... So I'm going to tell you right Let's now. Go. You ready for this? I'm ready. So check, check it out. out. So this was in the days where Twitter was popping. Instagram was kind of coming up. 
So me and my wife, we actually did a long distance relationship for about a good, I want to say close to a year. So me and my wife, we met on Twitter. She sent me a message on Twitter. She, she shot the she, shot. She slid in the oh, DM. Oh, she slid in the bro. DM, dog. Like you know what oh, I mean? That's I, right, King. I, I, like, that's let's wrong. go, King. Look, Keena knows what she wanted, right? So she saw. <laughs> so I got a. Re, I had a really good picture in my profile. So it probably, it probably looked better than what you know. He looks taller. I look, shit. <laughs> I looked taller. You know, I was a little slimmer. You know, and I, I, a lot of followers. Like, who's this guy? Yeah. So she actually sent me a message, and this is a message that she said. She said, "I'm gonna take you to Vegas, and I'm gonna marry you." Dude, that's it. That's all I needed Hold to see. That's Hold all I needed. Hey, everybody right now, go on Twitter. That's Put it. on a good picture. That's it. Put on a Wait good your picture. Shot. You're going to get married. So she sends that message. And, and at that point, you know, I didn't take it serious, right? You're just like, oh, you know, people. when you're single and you're you're young and you're going to parties, clubs, whatever the case is, you're interacting with a lot of different people. And that yeah. was at the time I was, I was in my early 20s. So I'm going to clubs. I'm going to parties left and right. And um, so she sends that message. I message her back. And that's where that started. So she, at that time, she lived in Rockford, Illinois. So a little bit, a lot of people think my wife is is, is white. I'm sorry. I'm about to start crying. No, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> so it's just, He's I, been watching the podcast. I, 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 I'm, I'm talking a lot, so it got dry. So she, she's actually um, half Syrian. So she grew, actually grew up as a Muslim um, child, right? Her dad is from Syria. And, yeah, mom is Caucasian from Kansas, and that's where my wife was born. She was born in Kansas. But, actually, her upbringing was Muslim. She was, a, she, she was Muslim, and, you know, her mom, hopefully she don't get mad, but her mom converted, and that was her upbringing or whatnot. So, um, you know, to fast forward a little bit is we started talking a little bit. And then the connection was amazing because, to me, with the people that I was interacting, I was in the party scene, you know, the club scene. Um, nothing was really serious, right? Like, you're you're meeting people, but at the same time, I, I started getting to a point where I kind of wanted something serious, right? Yeah. And it was kind of a little difficult to, to, to get it, you yeah. know? Not to say that I couldn't find the right person here, but I, it just wasn't happening for me, right? Nice. It just, and, and so on. So um, we connected very well. So then from the messaging, it went into, um, we were in Skype. We were Skyping and back in the Skype days. Yeah, we were, Hell we, were yeah. we were Skyping um, the iPhone. Then we started FaceTiming, and um, we never we at to that to this point we've never met, but we kind of built a relationship where we were kind of going out at that point, right? And it yeah. was that was a long distance stuff, and um, part of that relationship, which you know um, we always agreed upon, was that if my family is not going to accept you, we either have to cut it off. Or we need to find, you know, another outcome. So I wanted to go down the right direction as to let me learn about, you know, um, the religion, right? Let me do things the right way with her family because I did, I, I did like her. There I was is. very interested, you Get know, in it. her. So at the end of the day, if you don't have the blessings from the parents, it just becomes a little hard, Stuff. right? And um, so that's how that started. And how she ended up moving out here was eventually the parents did, well, the dad didn't accept me, right? He didn't really accept me or the relationship because I wasn't from, you know, the community. So this is where she takes a leap of faith, right? So it's like, so we came to this point. I talked to the dad. I tell the dad, you know, I have a good job. I'm going to school. I'm in college at the time. You know, I have a job. I'm going to school. I'm a good guy. And it just, you know, it, differences differences you know which i i don't fault him i understand it you know yeah. what i mean that's her daughter and um so then that's where that decision came we're like so we either break it off or we find you know a solution and the solution to her was it's like well we always said if my family doesn't you know accept you if you're willing i'll i'll move to la i had never met her in person bro Never had met her in person. This is all, you know. I know she was. She, I know she wasn't catfishing me. She's old. It was like, old, it was like it, go walk back over there so I could see you got two legs <laughs> and make sure that you know you're, you're you don't have makeup on only. And you're, you know it's so. It, I, I know I wasn't getting catfished. Good thing the catfish show wasn't back wasn't on back then, right? Oh, I, I think it might have been. It actually was. It was. It, it might have it been. It might uh, really, yeah, but she had to do a whole 360 for me, dude. <laughs> Just make sure I'm about to buy this flight ticket, and you know, I you know, but I knew it was her, right? I mean, we, yeah, dude, it got so. I'm telling you, this is a story. We would fall, so she, it was like a three hour time difference. I would fall asleep on, we would fall asleep on Zoom, on, on Skype, 
right? He we still will, does that. Yeah, you still do that. Oh, that's my guy. You, you're in a good. You're in a, don't worry about it. Don't let them. Don't let them clown you, dog. All my, all, all my homies clown me, but it's, we would fall asleep. It's because I'm jealous, bro. Yeah. It's because he doesn't do that with me, but he does oh it with other people. Oh my god. They're jealousy. Look, priorities. Priorities. Look. Dog. Look, your homies are gonna take you so far, <laughs> you know. But so we, w- I would, I would wake up to go to work. I was working at Bank of America, I think, at the time. So I would go to, w- I would wake up, and she was still on the screen. All right, I gotta go to work. I'll talk to you later. That was our relationship, like bro. straight movie stuff. Bro, how right? long? How long did that go? I want to say like four months, bro. Okay. Like we Damn. constantly, like, hey, I'm going out. Da, da, da. I was still going out a little bit or whatnot. My mom still doesn't know I have this serious relationship online, right? Because so I came from this upbringing that it's like I never brought a girl home. I never got home with hickeys. You know, I, I at one point I was embarrassed for somebody calling that, <laughs> like, like the, the landline. Yeah, you know, <laughs> hey, call call me in ten minutes. I'll be by the phone. Yeah, it was it was, that was yeah. You know, I, I don't know if it's because I was shy, I was scared. You can see my mom wasn't strict. Right, but yeah. it was just kind of, I guess the. It, it's it's our culture upbringing because mm-hmm. I I feel and I've always been like this. If I'm gonna bring you around, I am 100 percent sure I exactly. want to be with you. Yes, like I'm. I I hear other friends or other friends that before like, oh yeah, man, I just bring my homegirl. She can sit with the family. I'm like, no. are, you, are we serious? The, dog? the family has to be gone from the <laughs> yes. house if that happens. Like they're you know? asleep right now. You, that or they're in Mexico for yeah. the week, you know. <laughs> it's like that's the it, only way you're coming in here. Yeah, you know? and, nice. the, and that's how that's how that's really what you're saying. That's how it was that I needed to be sure that if I was going to introduce someone to, you know, my mom. That's what it was. Uh, and then you know my or my dad, but my dad was kind of like in and out, right? Like my dad kind of now he lives in Mexico. So my dad's always been in and out, even since I was small. He would leave for like a year, come back, leave for a year, sure, come okay. back. So that's how he was. Uh, my older brother ended up moving back to Mexico because when they, you know, came to the United States, he was a lot older. So he just never got comfortable here, right? right. He was in high school, I think. So the first chance he got, he went back right. or whatnot. And um, so now my wife is telling me, you know, buy my flight ticket. And... It worked out perfectly fine because at that time, like that was actually on his way out to Mexico. He was just visiting, out, so he yeah. was going out. So then now, I, here I go telling you know, it's like, are you sure? Da 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 da. You know, we have that whole conversation, and she's yes, a hundred percent. So I go and tell you know my mom like, hey, look, mom, I, I I'm in a serious relationship. My mom's shocked because it's like I'm twenty five, I think, or something. You dropped the and ball. My no, it broke because my mom was. I would do I was a little reckless when I was going out, right? I would go out Thursday, Friday, Saturday, beer punk Sunday. We go to Big Wangs on Tuesday for the 50 cents wings. Yeah. You know, you remember down in Hollywood. <laughs> um so I Best was Best wings out there. Yeah. Oh man, bro, you got I don't mm-hmm. know they're still good because I haven't been, but <laughs> yeah, it was fire, bro. Yeah. And so here I was reckless. So my mom was always like, slow down, slow down because of that. You know, that concern, something might happen, Yeah. right? I'm, I'm getting home at 5 in the morning, 6 in the morning. You know, mm-hmm. one, uh, one time I fall asleep, I, 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 she finds me in front of the house asleep because I couldn't open the keys. I couldn't open the door. So I'm sitting there with two cheeseburgers on the side, <laughs> you know, and, and, and my mom's like opening the door. What are you doing? Yeah. It, I, I couldn't get in. You know, I couldn't figure out, you know, the key. I didn't know what key so was. So here I go to sleep, you know, and. That's how reckless, a little reckless I was, right? Yeah, yeah. And um, so here I'm telling my mom. So to a surprise, it was like, yeah, she could move in. Because in her sense, it's like, this is a person that's going to straighten up my child. Yeah. And it's going to get me right, right? Because I've never, like, oh, I've never introduced her to a girlfriend. I, nothing like that, dude. Okay. So my mom's like, yeah. So she was all on board. So that same night, I hear I go booking the flight tickets. I had, you know, my financial aid money. I was going to school and I was working a little bit, you know. He said, so fuck the Mac. Bro. So I he always said, tell her, when Mac. you leave, you gotta pay me those flight tickets back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, so then she flies. She she the next day we she leaves without telling her parents. That's the crazy part about it. So she took that leap of faith. So it's a lot of pressure. So how did but how did that make you feel? Well, so like some you're you're already in that serious relationship. You're flying her out, right? And as guys, like when we're talking to a girl that's maybe close far whatever we're and we're throwing ideas we're just like yeah okay like until it happens cool 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 but you booked the flight now this your wife at that time this girl that you've never met in person never is coming, coming. 
to not to not live with maybe like they had family, they stay with family. She's coming with you, right? For you as a person, how did that make you just feel? Well, definitely, it was nerve wracking and a lot of pressure to like. I knew she was the one, right? Yeah. Like I just knew it, right? But still, being a realistic person, you just never know. Yeah, you never know. I mean, I've never met her. This has been a year. Um, I felt like I was ready because I kind of felt like I was already kind of tired of, you know, that specific lifestyle that I was, you know, you, rolling through. But um, it was a lot of pressure to obviously make it work, a lot right. of pressure as to I, I, I'm i going to have to, like, step it up, right? Yes. I, I have a part-time job. I'm going to school. You know, this girl, I, I know she, I, the plan was like, yo, yo, get a job. But you got to remember, I still live on 30th and Maple in the middle <laughs> of the hood. And I'm bringing this, like. The borrachos are still there in look, the front. Look, you get, oh, hell yeah, they're still in the front. Dog <laughs> on Memo still up there, Scooby's in the front. <laughs> cool. So it's like, you're just thinking, like, it there's just, a lot of pressure. It, it made you mature a little bit quicker. Oh, it made you, yeah. like, just change up. One day to another. Yeah. One day to another. And that's really, that, that was the pressure to make it work. I knew that you know, we'll figure it out. And I know, I mean, she, she could get a job and we'll, we'll kind of, we'll live here for a little bit and, and so on. But I mean, it's still a small house, right? It's still a person that doesn't know Spanish. Yeah. And that whole area is Spanish. But she doesn't know Spanish at all. At, I mean, she but learned a little bit. Now, here. like now, obviously with what you guys are doing, but be prior to that, no, no Neither. Spanish, bro. So she must have took like so Asian or French in school. <laughs> there was no Spanish. So she's going to, she's going to watch this. She's going to ask you about it. And I want to do this, not just for her, but for everybody that's wondering about your relationship. What was that quality characteristic that just for you was like, that's it to me? Look, personally, to me, it's it, it was really that I felt like I was a child, to be honest with you. I was a little reckless and I know that. Right. Yeah. But she was mature. She knew what she wanted. She wasn't into she, she I mean, she was young. Right. So she never been to a club. That yeah. wasn't her thing. She liked reading books. It was like she liked reading books. Things that to me is funny. And I till this day, I ain't reading no book. But you know <laughs> Me um, either, big guy. You know, it's like you'll catch me looking at Sports Center maybe. Yeah, I was reading that book backwards. <laughs> but I, yeah. she just kinda knew what she wanted and I knew she she was mature and she so that was the big thing. That she That's, knew what she wanted and really the way we clicked, right? Yeah. We were into the same music. You know, we could hold on to a long conversation to where other girls that I had, it wasn't that. It was just, let's go to the club or let's go drink, you know, let's go this. this. So with her, it was just more so I could have this type of conversation that we're having right now, That's meaningful, amazing. right? Yeah. Where I'm learning. And, and obviously her coming from a different culture, not to say like, oh, go out and get a, a girl that's from a different culture yeah. and that's going to work, right? Because there's a lot of speed bumps. There was a lot of speed bumps because of that along the way, right? But it, I, it was interesting to me, right, the way she was raised opposed to how I was raised. Right. So there was just a lot of new new things that I didn't know how she was raised, where she grew up, right? Like looking at her home like, damn, dude, look at this house, you know? Little things like that that just kind of helped. But just more so it was just really that maturity, yeah. right? And to me, I know I've always been a kind-hearted person, right? Like I mean no harm to nobody. I love life. You know, I love to help. I that's just my thing. You love love. I love love, right? And and, and I just always knew, like, I, I want to have a family. I want to have kids. I want to have that life. I, I it was I, When I was that age, it was like, I didn't want to do, like, oh, I want to be the social media person. That yeah. was never the in my, in the intention in my mind or anything like that. Yeah. It was like, I want to I wanna, I wanna see a child of mine, right? I want to have that happy life. That's really what I always wanted. So it was just really, it just clicked. I, I think just when you know, you know, bro. And he, he probably knows, right? Because it sounds like he's in a long-distance relationship. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Yo! Oh. Be, before... Don't me real quick. Uh, be, <laughs> Dylan knows, <clears throat> but he's finding himself. Yeah. So he's... You I'm, know, in that, little, I'm in that um, the reckless stage. Yeah. He, like, he's a little bit here, a little bit there. Poquito allá, poquito acá. How old are you, Dylan? Guess. He, he looks like he's 22. Motherfucker, you look 30. <laughs> <laughs> No, I wanted to be nice, dog. <laughs> 23. 23. I almost did. You almost did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I could tell by by his outfit. You know, he looks, he's a young guy. He's a young guy. Yeah, like we're, we're pretending to be a young guy. She, she, she dressed me today. Let me tell you. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 no. She send the, he has to send the fit check before he leaves the house. Look, at, at 23, Dylan, I was reckless. That was you. <laughs> yeah. I'm so pretty you got time, right now, dude. You that. got time. You got All right. Time. All right. Don't yeah. even know. <laughs> 
Yeah, where did where did we? Where did we? Um, I don't even know. Um, damn, everything's yeah, everything's I think, happening. I, it, yeah, I think we left off as far as like you just kind of know you, as far as the know. relationship. I knew you know who was that person. So for now, now let's get to the neat and greedy. Yeah. Mm. 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 Now you guys, she's here. You guys are living together. What's the biggest struggle you guys had to face? Ah, uh, for us, obviously the cultural differences. Okay, right because it's like I grew up. Straight, you know, Mexican, Hispanic, like household and stuff. Frijoles, all that. All that, right? Yeah. Um, the good thing was that my wife was, she's very cool and open to trying things, understanding things. And, and really, like, you could put her in this room and she'll get along with everybody, right? Because that's just the person that she is. Yeah. But the, the, the hard part was really, you know, we have a kid now. So in my family, like, you're, you baptize your kid. Well, that's not. That's not what they do, right? As a, as a so let's get into this because so when I had my son, I was going through transitions in my life, right? Right, and for anybody that knows me, like they're gonna like they know this when they hear this that when I lost myself spiritually, I had to find myself. My favorite artist, I don't know who's your favorite artist right now, music wise. Yeah, yeah. Ah, man, that's hard because right? I love music. It just depends. Like, like the go to, go to. My go to, I could listen to Drake a lot. You okay. know what I mean. I could listen to him. Drake, um, don't drink and drive. Don't no, drink and no, drive. No, 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 no. That's dangerous. Cry. That's dangerous. You know? Like, I could listen to him a lot. I like J. Cole. I like The Weeknd. Okay. I, fuck, you know? Yeah. Luke Bryan. I love country music. Oh. You know? Where, um, where are the boots, big guy? No, 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 no my dad got them. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to send me some. Yeah. Um, Dylan's, obviously, everybody knows. Bad Bunny. Ashley's Bad, Bad, Bad Bunny. Bunny. Yeah, yeah. So, Bunny. I'm going to shout out Ashley because she doesn't really, she doesn't really party. She's kind of like, she works late night. Nah. But no. but but listen to this. Cup two weeks ago, no, last weekend her BFFFFFF was here, and they had like a Bad Bunny theme party, and she partied like there was no tomorrow. Yeah, and you did not no know. tomorrow. It was intimate. It, <laughs> it was, was an intimate, intimate party. It was an invite only. You can't, you can't go I, everywhere, <laughs> Dylan. Oh. Damn, In, invite only and. And it's crazy because we kind of lived down the street and we weren't invited. No. But it's cool. Oh. <laughs> oh. Shots on there, but. My favorite artist is Kevin Gates. Kevin Gates, yeah, I know who that is. He's a Muslim. Mm. So all his, like, his music is super fire, very, like, relatable. His interviews is the ones that, like, bro, like, anybody that knows me, I quote that fool, like, left and yeah. right. Hey, don't be a part of the circus, you know, let the clown be the clown. Like, don't be, in, like, everything, bro. Love, I am the sacrificial sacrament of, of I love you, whatever it takes. Right. If it's to, like, as far as, like, if I love you, and there's a situation of life and death, I'll take it. That's how much it is, right? Right. I learned it a lot from him. So when I went through my transitions, the dude that I went to was like, dude, all right, if you're Muslim, why are you like this? Research. I was like, I had to believe in something. Right. So when I, I, was, I was on it for like a little bit, and when I told my mom, my mom, we don't go to church, fool. Like, I'm not going to lie. We don't go to, ch yeah, we don't go to I church, know. right? Yeah, I know. I Mexican know. parents, we're religious, but <laughs> it doesn't matter. Like, you may they not go, go to church. They go when they give the ramo, you know, specific, or when they give the, the ashes <laughs> the in the forest. Ash Wednesdays. The yeah. Ash Wednesdays. That's hey. when they go. And <laughs> they, <laughs> they, 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 <laughs> they're, they're religious. Fucking, they, yeah, but, you know, to each their own. And when I told her, like, I got a whole fucking, like, my mom cussed at me. What the fuck are you thinking? Are you serious? Like, what is... I'm just like, yo, like, I just had to believe in something. Yeah. I had to save myself. You know, for me, now where we're at, it's like, yo... And we were just talking about this the other day at the Ball and Park Street Market. It doesn't matter what you believe in. You got to believe in a higher power. Yeah. Bigger than yourself. 100%. Because you can believe in nothing, and you can be so much in a dark hole that you you got no way out until you believe in something bigger than it. You can believe in the microphone and the system and the light, whatever it is, bigger than you. There's a higher power. Right. You'll be saved. Yeah. So now you went through that transition of her culture, your culture, and the reason I brought it up is because when we had my son, I was in that transition. So everybody was like, well, when are you going to baptize him? Right. I'm like, why would I want him to get baptized by people that, like, when they leave out of there, they're going to be sinning? Right. And... I mean, there was a big fight, whatever, but, you know, that, that was my transition, and I was like, all right, well, yeah, so I and I was like, found my way. They was accepted like, hey. you, and they understood. I'm my, my son has two padrinos. Yeah. Because I was like, I can't just choose one, because I love you, but I know I love you, too, and you're the, I think when we choose, like, padrinos, and 
I'm gonna. I'm pretty bad because there's <laughs> when you when you come by the like, hell yeah the volo everything but during the time like you don't you forget about the kid right like, a lot yeah, of time I don't right talk to, I don't talk to my padrinos dude. <laughs> you know I talk to one the other one yeah I don't even oh come on padrino yeah they look for the one that got the money <laughs> like padrino <laughs> come on <laughs> you know like yeah. hey, we're gonna make him because he got the big house so he's gonna be the padrino <laughs> so I I thought about it I was like all right and I thought about just an extreme like when if the day that I leave, who can take care of my kid? Right. I'm going to teach him the right way. Right. And they were like, nah, you just pick one. I was like, I can't. Yeah. I'm picking two. I'm like, I got to pick two. Like, now I got my daughter, and, and I'm still trying to figure that one out. But everyone's like, I'm like, I don't know yet. Like, just give me time. It's a, it's a hard conversation with the Latino community, right? If, you, if you're brought up that way. Yes. See, for us, it was like, I knew the sacrifices that she was doing for coming here. She was leaving all her family, everything she knows, and coming into a community, an environment that is totally out of her, like, realm. Didn't even imagine Different. what she was getting herself yeah. into. Um, and I always told her, no, like, I know the sacrifices that you're doing. So anything as far as life, as far as um, marriage, as far as if we are ever blessed to have a child, you're going to take that lead. Right, because now I gotta make that sacrifice to to know like you sacrificed to come over here, and I, you know, and, and it just kind of like what you were saying. I, I grew up as a as a Catholic, right? And my mom goes to church here and there and so on. But I, as I got older, I didn't go to church, right? Yeah. Like I would go to the quinceañeras, right? And you know, <laughs> don't go to the church, but you go no, to the fucking you go to the party. Quinceañera, and maybe yeah. that's that's where you go to the church. The last time you go, yeah. and so Back. with me, it was just more so like, how can I force her? to change her ways when she's already leaving everything behind yeah. to change her ways to, to now implement my upbringing that I know nothing about to that extent. Right. Yeah. Like that are just, that's just hypocritical of me. And that's just me just being selfish to say, I'm taking everything and we're doing everything my way. Or it's like, no, like I don't want you to forget, you know, who you are, how you were raised, your family yeah. and so on. So there was always that conversation from the start. You want to raise our our children, you know, as Muslims, that's fine with me. That no, no, no problem. I'm not going to force you to, you know, baptize. And I think my mom, because she's so, she's such a loving person and she understands how much my wife shaped me up. She does <laughs> ask, you know, the baptizing yeah. or certain things, right? Like certain conversations, the baptizing or, you know, the speaking to him in Spanish and so on. And I'm not saying that we don't speak to our child in Spanish, but it's just those conversations that I had to talk to my mom. Like, look, mom, like, this is how it's going to happen, yeah. and this is how it's going to be, and you got to understand that. And thankfully, she did. So there's, so for us here, right, obviously, we're, we're on the mic. There, there has to be a understanding when you're with someone, if you love that person, right? right. Instead of the machista way of, uh, es lo que yo hago y yeah. es todo. Sometimes you got to break those cycles, bro. You do. But you know, we are breaking those cycles. Cultural cycles. Cultural, cultural cycles, right? That I think we're all bringing, like, Cindy, fucking business owner out here, fucking thriving, doing her thing, Cindy. right? <laughs> you know? Boss and, girl. Like, everybody here is, I think we're all breaking those cycles that we were put in a box in. Yeah. Like, you're going to be put, like, you have to only do this. Right. And, we, and because we get out of the box, we kind of get rolled on and, like, you're the fucking bad child. And I'm like, I'm just, and I'm it, goes, good. it goes back to being, you can say, the first or second generation here in the U.S. Yeah. Because my parents were immigrants, too. Immigrants. And it it gets that pressure to you. You're like, God, I got to get my parents out of this. You know, yeah. they sacrificed everything. They jumped yeah. over that wall yeah. for me, you know? <laughs> yeah. And it's like, God damn, I got to get somewhere. Not because of me, but because of them. Right. You know? Right. Yeah, and that was a big part of me growing up. It's like exactly. making sure that I don't fail them yeah the, their dreams of them sacrificing what they left behind yeah. to come here to ensure that we have a better life so do you think what you're doing right now you're doing good as far as um as everything far. you're doing so let, let's jump right into the new when did you decide we're gonna be on social media we're gonna be out there so we man look we we never planned it so as you know we me and my wife got married right we moved in vegas out. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, just making we're, sure. We're making sure. We're, 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 he he screenshotted that. No, no, we, we got married down La Brea, you know, La Brea and okay. Olympic at a, at a little spot, you know? Okay. Cool. Uh, we were going to get married in Cancun, but there was just so many, like, barriers to get married down there, right? 
Um, but we were never going to get married religiously. So we're not married religiously. We're married, you know, by the court and stuff like court that? law, whatever the case is, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. I was never the person like I want to, you know, get married and walk down. Not necessarily that she was either, but it was just something that. So what is it, so? OK, so what is that? Because ooh, here comes the that, that 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 right there is an iffy part for us guys. And I don't know for I don't know for girls marriage. Is it iffy? No. I think it depends no. right. on, on on the age of the person, right? Like I, I don't think too many people get married nowadays. Oh no, no! Like we we don't. think about <laughs> if I if we ask everybody here, we're gonna be like, mm, hey, yeah, yeah no, yeah. it was we that was never our intention. We weren't even ever gonna do anything. We were just gonna go down to Cancun and just us two and just you know uh, make it happen. But yeah. obviously that didn't occur. So then we just kind of took a different route. Yeah. Look, my wedding, there was no family, no aunts, no tias, no uncles, because I am that type of person. Like, I'm not the type of person, I must go and spend all this money, right, like the typical Hispanic, yeah. right? And I don't, I don't. The I tias don't, are the tias that you never even right. talk to. The yeah, primos, the primos, yes, this, yes. this, this. Yeah, I don't yeah. judge. I don't judge. Everybody does each what their they own. do, each their own, right? Yeah. My thing, it was like when we were deciding we're going to get married, this is what we're going to do, and so on. It was like, why am I going to invite? Like, and I had the conversation with my mom. Right, like, why am I gonna invite this tia and spend money on her plate when I haven't talked to her like in ten years? Bro, we're the fucking same. Like, I don't it, do that shit. Like, they, I always say, like I always say, make it private, not a secret. Right. Oh. Exactly. Yes. Spot on. Spot on. Bro. Hey, there we go, Dylan. Shit is coming. Fingers, through. fingers, fingers. <laughs> yeah, and that's what it was. There was fifty people, and there was more of my childhood friends there at yeah. at, at my actual reception wedding. Because those are the people that I've been around, my best friend. That's fucking dope. Right? Like my grandma was there 100%. My mom was there. So, right? how, so how important is that circle then? To me, like my friendship, because of how close I grew up with these friends, is, is sacred, right? Because yeah. I, I, I've known, I still know them. I still talk to them. What's the day. secret to building the, the circle or keeping that circle? Look, I was just fortunate enough, like I was saying earlier, that I grew up in the right environment with the right people that had those goals, that had those, you know, intentions to do good in life. And yeah. they, di they helped, because I was the youngest one from the group. So they directed me, and they kind of looked out for me. Um, so to me, as we got older, and we're still friends, and we're, they became my child, my, my little one right now, all my, like, close friends, Uncle Chris, Uncle Mike. That's those dope. are his hey. uncles. Yeah, that's, 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 that's my Hell thing. Yeah. So it's like, hey, uncle, he's, he's talking to so Uncle Chris. Yeah. Uncle Chris is my, you know, one of my best friends. Uncle Mike, my best friend. That's who he's calling his uncle because those are the people that are around. Thanks. Right? Like, my family right now, there's a lot of issues in that family, man. <laughs> that if they see this video, I personally, I've always been like, I don't give a fuck, right? I don't even know if I could curse. But I don't I don't care about their personality. However, we call. You know, I don't, you know. The, I made my mom kick out one of my uncles from her house because as Mexicans, you sign them off. You get them a house. And that's what my mom did. She goes and get, what does my uncle do? He goes, doesn't pay the mortgage for like a year. Now my mom's getting calls. You know, she has to foreclose the house. It's like, no, nah, you got to get this dude out of here. That's my uncle. I don't give a fuck about that. I don't have that relationship with him like that, right? He didn't care to call me. And I understand maybe Man. came from me. But that's just, we're blood to that point, And that's that. You're, bring, you're bringing up a good point, And I know we're, um, everybody got to hold on. Make sure you subscribe. You tune in. You, you follow the platforms. You yeah, got yeah, to. Yeah. We're gonna remind you. Got you got, you got to. to remind everybody. Exactly. Mike, subscribe to and comment. You got to comment. But you're bringing up a good point because I know we're going to jump into the social media. But you, the point that you just brought up is super important. Yeah. Because, it's, because it's family. Oh, you have to make sure you're good. No, bro. Sometimes, right. sometimes they're, it's not in the best interest of your own life. Right. Especially when, like, when you have kids, Dylan, when you got kids, you're going to understand this. Right. That oh, the same people you want to be around with, you got to make sure those people are the right ones to be around right. your kid. Yeah. Because you your family will mess you up, bro. Your own family. And yeah. that's, that's that my, my own family messed up my mom. Yeah. Right? They didn't care about, you know, her credit. They didn't care. About this guy it's not familiar. paying. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's not paying. Oh, it's primos, it's tias. Oh, it's me. Not, bro, and it doesn't some, matter. And sometimes we extend that arm a little too much. Yeah. And 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 it's for their for their benefit, right? Yeah, they're facts. not. They're not. They don't care about. He didn't care. Yeah. Right. And you know, so I had to push my mom like, now you gotta get that guy out. You gotta do what you gotta do you gotta get, to yeah. protect your own. And that's exactly. and, that, and that's what it was. So it's like my do, my do. wedding, bro. There was my grandma was there, and and maybe one of the aunts that wasn't invited showed up. You know, it's, 
But you know what you you ain't gonna you, kick you, her out. You know, so whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you know what's good about about having like a small kind of wedding? What is it, dude? Bro, it's gonna be expensive as honeymoon. I'll tell you that. Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's, that's where the that's money. That's personally went. me. If I get so married, if, if I ever get married, yeah. So honeys, <laughs> make sure you tune in to Dylan. <laughs> He's gonna take you. Somewhere He's gonna take you somewhere nice. Uh, it's gonna be a small private wedding, but the honeymoon, God, it's damn. gonna be a twenty-four hour flight. Yeah. Yeah. Minimum, Shit, first class, baby. You gonna, you gonna put your feet up in that bitch? Yeah, you gonna have a bed. You are gonna have a pod. You gonna have a pod for dinner. We're gonna be clapping at the end of the freaking <laughs> at the end of the flight, bro. <laughs> Oh, if you don't know, now you know, now baby. You, all right, ladies, Dylan's a single man. So now you know what you're getting. Yeah, Dylan's wild then. But all right, so <laughs> <laughs> we're back. We're going to fast forward yeah. the social media. So social media, dude. Yeah. We're, we're excited. I want to so, know this. Look, Everybody wants to know this. Social media. At, look, our platform is TikTok. That's where we got started. We had an Instagram. Obviously, we had a Facebook or whatnot, yeah. YouTube channel. But um, actually, my little nephew, my, my sister's son, um, downloaded the app, he will come over my my house. So where I live, my my older sister actually lives around the corner. Mm. Or we could walk there. Come through. So my little nephew, he's about ten now. So this was two years ago. TikTok's popping off. This is before I want to say it was a we we're about to hit COVID. He he wanted me to download the app. He was using the app at the time. And and sometimes you gotta pay attention to these kids, man, because these kids know what's about to happen. Yeah. Because they're so in the in phone. There. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, look, if you're if you're in the space that we are, sometimes those are the kids you want to keep a close eye on. Because <laughs> let me call my little cousin real quick. Hold on, let me bring him here. They gonna make you money. You know, <laughs> you just gotta you just gotta be at the right place at the right time. And yeah. that was us, bro. To be a hundred percent honest with you, that was us. It was a right place at the right time. Luck. But in life, you need luck. And that's what I always tell people. Like, this doesn't, things don't happen just because, yeah, you, 100%, you got to work hard. Yeah. You got to work hard to build this channel, right, to build where we're at now. Facts. But you need a little luck sometimes. And that's just part of life, period. So my little nephew makes me download this app, TikTok, on their phone. So I download it because he's over the house. I download it so he has something to do. And he starts making these videos. And then he tells us, oh, let's do a prank. Let's do a prank video to your wife. So here we go doing a prank video. Oh, so um, we do a prank video. If I'm not mistaken, it was where I say her like a different name. I say her I a seen name that. that yeah, yeah, it yeah. was like one of our first fucking videos or whatnot. Um, so he was over the house a couple of times. So we did a few videos on that. So that's the one that kicked off this prank where I say like, like a different name. And her reaction was just like, who is whatever name What'd I you use. Say? I don't yeah. even know who her name is that I use. And we, we thought it was funny. So we posted up and... You know, this video just boom, 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 starts climbing with v with views. We're not doing social media, so we don't really know what's happening what's happening, or we don't know how this really works and so on. We're not influencers or nothing like that. And I think the video got up to like a million views. And I'm like, man, we're on this. This is crazy. This is we're onto something. TikTok's not paying at the time. So we're just, you know, oh, the views. So then we start here and there kind of just making videos, like little prank videos. Yeah. We still don't know our direction. We're doing like the voiceover videos. That it, It's fun at that time. Yeah, we're just, we're just messing with fun. the app. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at what things are popping on my For You page. People are using like other voices to do their own yeah, like videos. And, and that's how it started, right? So we started doing, you know, those videos. And we started getting followers. And we start, we're, we're getting a lot of views on these videos. Still not making no money at this time. And um, shortly after, right place at the right time, TikTok introduces um, monetization. Their, their monetization program. So now you can make some money off of this as long as you have 10,000 followers yeah. and you're getting some views. So now we're like, <laughs> We had oh, to figure that shit out. Look, bro, yeah. look, like, yeah. like you're paying me now to do this? I'm so ready. I, I'm still, at this time, I'm, at, I'm working for yeah. L.A. County, so I'm working at an office job or whatnot. Um, I'm working for L.A. County and... Um, um, we're doing these videos and they start paying and, and we're not making crazy money. We're making, you know, yeah. 20 bucks, 15 bucks, just a little chump change. My wife is still, you know, working. I think she was pregnant at the time. Yeah, she was already pregnant. So we're starting making these videos and then COVID hits. Boom. They sent her home basically, right? So now she's not working. So she's at home and um, I'm still working and we just start taking this a little bit more serious. So we just start making, you know, these videos, and then we find our niche. Yeah. 
Right. right? Because I was really, that's what I, when I talk to people as far as like, oh, I want to do videos, is that, well, you got to find. You got to find what's best for you. What, yeah. Right? What like, we, we, do? we cannot do, like, fuck, I cannot do workout videos. <laughs> like, <laughs> follow this word. No. Nah, nah, fool, I'm going to nah. take, I'm going to take you to McDonald's after this. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, okay. One thing about this, dude. We, ah, we, fuck. I'll, I'll expose you right now, though. We go to the gym. <laughs> We we'll hit the bench. Finish, we're finishing off with bench. He goes, bro, let's go to the sauna already. It's worse. Let's go to the sauna. I'm like, bro, we just started. We're 15 minutes. In. Let's go to the sauna, bro. Let's go. I'm like, bro, let's just get a full workout, and then we'll go to the sauna. It's because right now I'm in a content creator mindset. For I work out, I take a couple of videos. All right, let's go. <laughs> but just, just okay. Look at, look, look at this stuff. <laughs> this motherfucker is big. He sure is. So. Is this will fit 15 minutes of working. He's like, I'm fine, bro. I'm trying to get as big as him, you know? Like, I need a two hours in this hole. Like, it's damn. A, but me and Dylan together are bad, bro. Like, I think, like, last Friday, not this past Friday, the previous Friday. So, when this airs to, like, probably two, three Fridays, we were down. <laughs> and then we went to Ola's. <laughs> bro, okay, so then I we went, we I went to go to get a Michelada fright. <laughs> Hey, bro. That's I said helping. I work hard. No, that's why. I worked hard. That's why and I, I earned it. Gym, you know, just to make sure I'm good. Exactly, <laughs> bro. But and, and you did not want to do cardio, bro. So I, I did it, bro. Back, we were, already, we were already leaving. And I was like, bro, 10 minutes is 10 minutes. Let's fucking do cardio. That's it. And it he is was facts. Like, he was like, he's like, nah, bro. Let's go. I want to go, go home. Go to for, let's go home already. And I was like, no, nah, you better get your ass in that fucking <laughs> stairmaster, dog. And I was like, let's go. So you got introduced into monetization. Now you're making money. Now you guys, you guys see the views. You guys see the following. At what point was it like, dude? Like this is serious. Um, so I want to say, uh, it started getting serious when we started making those brand deals. Where oh. like early on, uh, very early on, we were getting very small, like three hundred, four hundred, five hundred dollar brand deals. The promotions, and, yeah, those, like those little brands, hard. you know, like little brands, upcoming brands. I'm like, dude, 500 bucks? Hell yeah. I was taking everything. Especially my mindset is like, I'm taking everything, right? Because I don't know when this is going to end. So I'm taking everything. And at that point, I mean, it's just getting introduced. But um, once it's, it, it really got serious well, when I felt like we could kind of make a living off of this to a certain extent, right? With, you know, brand deals. Correct. I noticed that we built a community. What, what was your following at that time when you got brand deals? Uh, I must have been like maybe at half a million, Three hundred thousand. Mm, no, but, no, but listen. Mm. No, listen, listen. No, I, I've seen people get little brand deals at. Again, I always tell people like, yeah, we you see us and oh, we get this brand deal. Yeah, 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 we get this brand deal. But if you're if you have a niche and like let's just say you're doing workout or you're doing your niche is cooking. Right. It don't ma- it, it really doesn't matter how many followers you have if you have like a really good community and engagement. That's one thing that I learned in this business. It's it's not so much of how many followers you have. It's how many people are engaging, how many people believe in what you're saying because you could have 3 million followers on TikTok. But Congratulations though. Thank you. Congratulations. Yes sir. 3 million. Oh yeah, I saw thank, that, you. Thank, you, thank you. Big body. Thank you. But it, we could have that and I've seen other accounts that have that. They have more than us, and I don't see, you know, Gage them man. having that brand deal that it's like we're at three and we've worked with Target, we've worked with Walmart, we've worked with these big corporations, but and I'm like, dude, like it's crazy, like there's we're not doing really anything different. Yeah. There's an account with nine million and they won't have it, but it's really because that account is just posting, you know, random stuff. So the brands are like, well, what can I target? Like, right? Like, yeah, you have nine million views, nine million followers. But if you don't have a targeted audience, it's kind of hard for that brand to say like, oh, well, we have this account with 3 million, you know, followers. Nice. But his targeting audience is, I'll now say it, is the Hispanic community because that's the, truly that's what it is, right? It is. An older Hispanic community. Yeah. So then the brand's like, well, we, we're working on this campaign specifically targeting the Hispanic community. We're about to take over the world. Not me, but I'm talking about the Hispanic community, right? Like we are that population that's like, we're, we're moving. We're doing something. We're doing it. We're yeah. doing it. And I'm proud for that, bro. Uh, hell yeah. I'm because proud for that. I think that that's like something we take upon and just kind of, um, not in a recent aspect, but kind of like, you know, you start thinking about more, you know, you start growing your social media, you start growing the audience and everything. You start thinking about it because it all, all it takes is for somebody to tell you like, yo, man, you guys are doing it for the people. Um, and I think about it like the people, the people. I'm like, yeah, bro, actually, like, we're Hispanic. We're proud. Yeah. We're doing something. Oh yeah. And my thing is like, yo, don't 
just generalize yourself into one area. Be for the world. And when you go for the world, like, there's people that are going to, like, attach to you. Right. That, right. hey, like, people fuck with you guys and mess with you guys and love watching you guys and share your stuff because they fell in love with you guys. Right, right, right. You can post whatever. And right. they're like, damn, bro. I A lot of that has to do is, is, is really, it always comes down to personalities, right? Yeah. Like I, like, I, like, I always say, I am a good person at heart, right? Like, that's just me. That's my personality. When we're out and about and people, f- like, like actually sees us in person, yeah. it's, 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 it's always that undivided attention. If someone comes and asks for a picture, it don't matter what I'm doing. Yeah. I'm going to take it, right? My wife is the same way. We're very, because we, we're very fortunate for this, this position that we're in, excellent. right? So when we do get that love and when we do you know, get that response from the people. It's like, we're not here without them. Yeah. That, that's at the end of the day. That's what it is. We built the community where I brought up the Hispanic upbringing that I grew up because I'm not faking it. Like, that's really how I was raised. No, that's really you. It's really, it's really you. Thing. And now I'm bringing another person from a different culture yeah. and we're making it into a comedy style. So we touch a lot of... Nowadays, you see a lot of um, relationships that are, you know, biracial. Right, yeah. like a lot of relationships. You know. So a lot of yeah. people, you know, a lot of people do connect with that, and and because you know we, I do feel like we're authentic, right? And I do feel like we do it for the right reasons. You you last so long in this space of social media when you're authentic, right? You can be authentically yourself a lot longer than faking it, and 100%. we've and we've said that shit forever. Oh hell yeah, yeah we've said that shit forever. Especially, especially when I want to go when I want to go pick him up down there. Yeah. I was I was lost, bro, and he was lost. And <laughs> Two lost motherfuckers. I was sending him a text. I was like, "Yo, I'm right here." Waiting for you I look up and he goes, "What's up, bro?" I was like, "What's up, man?" Yeah, I'm just a happy yeah. dude. Yeah, it, it, and it was just—it's the vibes, bro. Like exactly it, what he said. Yeah, just yeah. the vibes. The way you—the way you treat others is the way you want to be treated in this world. Exactly. And yeah. and not always you're gonna get treated the right way. You never right. Never. Sometimes your your love and your kindness is gonna get abused. Right. That's the sad part. But that's the thing that hey, you know what? It's cool. Right. You may, my love to you may not mean a lot, but my love to somebody else will probably get valued. And it's cool. Like, it's just life. Yeah. You know, and the whole thing about life that one needs to understand is it's not always going to be pretty. It's not always going to be fucking glitz and glamour and followers and this. Like, again, we talked about this earlier and I'm going to put this shit on camera. Like, let's go. Hey, we're not famous, but we're impactful. Yeah. The whole thing about being impactful is you're making a change in this world where you don't you don't chase the numbers. Right. I don't think you chase the numbers, right? Nah, nah. You, definitely you, I don't. I, I really don't. That's not the thought when we're doing the videos. It's just right? you. It's just, you know, just obviously it became a, a business. And, and and like for us, it's, a, it's not necessarily the numbers, oh, we're trying to get to this or we're trying to get to that. Because that's going to come. Yeah. Right, like yeah. it's, it's gonna come if you're if you're doing things the right way and 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 you invest a lot of time, like you guys were just talking about. Right after this, you go and study YouTube. Yeah. Right, like you're 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 trying to perfect your craft, Facts. and this is a craft. What we do is a craft, but it's it's not as, it, that's gonna come. The the numbers are gonna come. The 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 brands are gonna come if you're doing things you know the right way. It's just a matter of time. It, yeah, this is this is a matter of it. time. Put and in the work. A little work. bit of luck. And a it, little bit of luck. A little bit of luck. Yeah. It, it could take you a month. Yeah. It could take you a year. It could take you two or three. But your time will come as long as the you're doing it for the right reasons. People ask us like, "Yo, like, damn, you guys are fucking really doing it, bro." We've never chased this. We chased the message and we chased the story. Everything else that came with it was just meant to be. Yeah. We didn't come out here like, oh, we only need to target blue checks. We only need to target people that have this. No, 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 no. We've had people that have maybe less than 5,000 on IG. We've had questions yeah. from comments and everything. Do you guys only interview like 50 yeah. people? How do you no, do it? Like, do you have to have Nah, bro. It's just your purpose has to be great. Your yeah. purpose has to be out there. Because yeah, exactly. you cannot post. You cannot say you want to come on and share your story when all you're doing is just posting that you're fuck like memes or, or going out drinking and negativity. It's like right. nah, bro, like that's different. You know what I'm saying? All right. So again, I'm not gonna. I'm gonna just remind you guys. Make sure you guys tune in. You guys subscribe, comment, follow, comment, Please share hit it. That bell button. Bell. Exactly. Put the reminder on, bro. We dropping every Monday right. nonstop. We consistent in this mother. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you guys, your platform growth, you just schooled us right now in branding, 
in, you know, building, being authentically yourself, right. you know, people are going to feed in. With this whole thing that's happening, the fame, the recognition, how do you keep a balance mentally and emotionally? Ah, uh, man, that's a deep question. Um, we can cry now. No, I'm because, ready. No, 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 because it, you're, you're right. Like, you do have to keep that intact because um, mental health does play a big part in this space. I know you're big on mental health. Yeah, big on mental health. I'm super big on mental health. And, and you do have to have, you know, the right mindset because when you're in this space, it's very hard because you're going to get those negative comments. Yeah. Um, it becomes hard specifically when this is your livelihood. Yeah. How, how, how do you make this a longevity, you know, career? And you're in front of the camera, so you have people criticizing your wife. You have people criticizing you. Um, things that you're doing, right. and so on. And, and, and people in the comment section, sometimes they're just mean, right? So if you don't have, like, if you're not in the right, like, mental health space, yeah. that stuff could break you. And and there was times that early on when we were learning this, um, I could tell that it was affecting my wife, right? Like, she's already. pregnant, you know? So people don't know she's pregnant. Oh, she's getting heavy. That's what, you know, they say, right? Or, damn, Cisco, like... Life is good. You're getting fat, you know, and and those things that, believe yeah. it or not, these people that are watching you every yeah. day, <laughs> there's people that are so invested into, like, your appearance. Yeah. And you, the, what I mean about having the right mental health space is that you got to be strong in the mind. And sometimes, depending on the person, not everybody is, you know, strong in the mind. These comments could really affect So how do people. you, how do you stay, like... So when we say mentally strong, I, it, it's a it's so cliche because you cannot be mentally strong twenty four hours. No, Not you cannot be mentally strong twenty four seven because today we can be mentally fine, and they the day of tomorrow when we wake up, we're fucked. You have, to have, you have to have that breakdown moment where you're you like, do. you just restart, bro. Yeah. Restart, so so and for you, nice. what it like? What is that? So to 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 me and my wife, what. Throughout the tr with, with this transition, what ended up ha helping us is really is really her that kind of you know despite even her getting attacked or whatever because obviously our content is like the Hispanic with the white girl yeah. oh pinche güera this they're it's, they're <laughs> always attacking her and she's the, and it's, it sucks because she's the most lovable person bro yeah. but that's just our characters that you know became in the space but what she kind of brought in is like you need to put the phone down and we need to you know reconnect. So every day, it's like we, at 8 o'clock when we, you know, put the baby to sleep, it's me and her time, we'll watch a show, right? We're, and we're, I'm not answering emails. I'm not looking at, you know, here and there, obviously, to be honest, I'll, I'll look, but it's, it's having that time for ourselves where, where it's not social media, yeah. right? Because now we just became this image in social media, and we have comments, or we're, I'm, I'm over here thinking of the next video, or, hey, tomorrow we need to do this. And so it, 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 gets a, it, it becomes a lot. Right. And if I wasn't in the right state of mind and I didn't have the support that I do with my significant other, I'll probably break. You know what I mean? Because it's, it, it is a lot. But it's really having that undivided time and undivided attention with your family and the people you love. Right. Like we try to say, like, let's go, you know, once a week, just us to go, you know, have dinner somewhere. Just us. We'll leave the baby somewhere. And, and as much as we try, sometimes it doesn't always work out, right, because yeah. of the schedule. But I, I would definitely say, like, for me, is really having, you know, a person that, you know, uh, loves me. Yeah. You know, having a good group of friends that, you know, always gonna, it's going to keep me intact. Yeah. And not only that, it's like I, I've always worked in the mental health field. So I learned a lot in college, right, yeah. you know. Um, I've always worked with kids. And even till now, I still work with kids. I work with kids that are... Uh, in foster care so i work with kids that are in foster care so i see what they're going through and a, a lot of the times the shit that they're going through it's nothing to what i'm going through so that keeps me grounded like life could be fucking worse for me because i see it what i see what the kids are going through right yeah. and and that always kind of keeps me grounded as to like let me let me continue working with these kids let me continue helping them and being that positive role model to them that you know even showing them like, look, I do social media too. Showing them that I'm hip, yeah. right? <laughs> and helping them, you know, get through cool. it. Because yeah. I have kids that are in foster care, 14 placements, right? I have a kid, 14 placements, and he's only 10. 
So that yeah. means he's been in 14 different places since he was born, right? Like, look at that life. And then, yeah. you know, I go back and it's like, like, and I, you know, not to say that my stuff is not valid. So, so what do you tell yourself then? So you, so you work with that, you're doing this, do you get tough moments? Obviously, relationships are not always perfect. Life is not always perfect. But you see that this person over here is having it worse, right? That that stigma, that 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 phrase, like, oh, you may think you have it bad, but somebody else has it worse. But that doesn't really play an effect until you really actually think about it, right? So for you, what it like? What do you tell you? So in the day where Francisco like wakes up, and you're just like, damn, bro, I'm fucking tired. I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. 100%. What What do you tell yourself? So what's helping me, obviously, because I still work. Okay. And I still, I have this connection with these kids that I see every week. Yeah. Right? Like, I, 100% honest, I could leave my job if I wanted to. But I don't, right? Like, because I, I still feel like I could do it. It's flexible, one. And two, it's like these kids that I get so invested in help me, help my life out. Yeah. Because I get the joy of helping that kid get a job. And, oh, dude, I got a job. I just helped him get that job. You get the joy of helping others? I get that joy, bro. And so when I wake up that I'm tired and it's like, damn, I got to record. I got to convince my wife to record. <laughs> and she's she's not in the best mood today. Yeah. But at the same time, I got to go see that kid today because he's expecting me to pick him up from work. Right? Like, I'm going to pick him. Today's the day that I pick him up and I take him home. Yeah. And I just check in with him. Hey, how you doing? I got him that job. So I got my first check. So it's like, I know he's expecting me. So I... That gets me going. Let me put my stuff to the side. Let me figure it out. I'll grind right now, but I'm going to get that joy of going and picking him up from work and seeing him laughing at him because he's limping to my car. <laughs> you know, like, what happened? It's hard, huh? It's hard. It's, uh, you thought it was going to be easy. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, 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 and just installing my knowledge and connecting with those kids that, you know, don't have the best circumstances in their life. Yeah. And you know what I mean? So to me personally, that keeps me going. Right? Like, I, I just love it. I love it. I love it. Is there a quote that you go by that you remember? Oh, or, a, or a, so we did this, like, last Sunday they asked me, and I just put, like, a bunch of quotes just put together. Mm -hmm. and I'm like, yo, I live by this. But there's something always that you got to tell yourself. Ah, man, not necessarily. Like, right now, as you're putting me in the spot, if you would have gave me this, you know, homework assignment yesterday, <laughs> I would have gave you a really good one. But... I, I, I can I can can I tell you right now that I can think of one on the spot. I really don't have one, but yeah. you know, just to me, is this really what you're doing for others? Let right? me ask you a better question. Who do you grind for? My family, bro. Like my son. Like all this changed for me. Like I, I truly believe, like we were talking about the higher power. All this changed for me was when my wife was pregnant. That's when everything kicked off. And when my son came in into this into this world. Yeah. So my thing. My thing is my child, bro. That's my life. My wife, that's my life, yeah. right? Like, I, I do everything for that child. You know what I mean? I, I wake up for that child, and I see how hard it is for mothers because I'm, a, I'm at home a lot, yeah. right? And, and sometimes, ah, raising a kid is, is – hell no, it is not easy. Hell no. My wife always says, raising a kid is two jobs. I believe that because I'm at home a lot. And, and going through that transition and seeing that child just grow and flourish and me being able to give that child – Things that I can never imagine, right? Like, I don't have to worry if I, if I need to order food for him. Oh, you want to go to Disneyland? I don't have to worry about hitting up my cousin. Hey, can you get us in Disneyland? Like, I could pay for that shit. <laughs> I but still do. That, you know, I, 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 I'm going to be honest. I, I sure did, you know? Um, but it's, it, it's what I'm able to give to yeah. that child and seeing that smile. And, and that's, that's my fear, bro, that, you know. What is the fear? My fear is me not being able to provide for my family. So I grind my ass off. And I always have, right? And what I mean by my family, not only my child, my wife, my mom, you know, my siblings, you know, being able to, you know, provide for them in one way or another. Yeah. That, that's, that's really what my life is about, bro, if my you, family. If you don't mind me asking a question, kind of piggyback off of what he said. And it kind of relates to you and me and uh, to all those people, the Hispanic people out there. And it means differently to a lot of people. Yeah. You know, some people it means comfort. Some people it means money. No, but what is the American dream for you? To me, honestly, the American dream is, is really being able to give, like, my son the life that I didn't have, that home, right? That home that I didn't have, his own room, right? Putting those sacrifices forward. If I need to put him in a private school, then that's that. Putting them in the right situations for him to be able to be the best person that he could be, right? Because I got lucky. 
Yeah. And I like I but going back to this conversation, I was lucky to be in a good situation in a good street with good people. Yeah. That might not be the situation for my child. Right? Yeah. So that no, I have to work for that. You know, and and and, and, and that's really the American dream, right? To be able to buy that home for my kid. So you know, I I think here in this podcast, obviously we based off this podcast since the beginning, mental health, getting a safe space to talk about conversations yeah. that in a general setting, they're uncomfortable. Yeah. But in this setting, they're very comfortable because you are around, we're around people that are, you know, actually fucking genuine. Yeah. Again, we don't need you for who, you, what you can provide. Right. We're here together because of who we are and, you know, the power above brought us together. Yeah. So for you, looking back, everything you've been through, Everything from living, coming over, living in, in your street, in your house with, with all your family, your dad not, you know, in and out. What would you tell a young Francisco from where you're at now to where back then where you're just like, damn, I don't know what fucking life will be, dog. Yeah. Yeah. What would you tell that? Uh, young? So speaking to a young Francisco, but also to that young Francisco that may be going through a similar situation. Man, that's powerful, bro. I love it. Then that's what, like, before I even answer your question, that's why I didn't even hesitate to, like, come to this podcast because, like I mentioned earlier, yeah. I've seen this podcast before, right? That's and, and I just love the environment. I love your message and what you guys are trying to do here. So, obviously, it ties into what I believe in, which is mental health, positivity, yeah. And um, to answer your question, it's like, what would I tell? Is like, it's gonna be all right, but at the same time, you gotta use those people that love you, and communicate with those people. Tell your mom, right? Because we still have these. Me growing up, I didn't feel comfortable talking to my mom about, you know, mental health or my personal struggles or my dad, yeah. my neighbor, my sister. But really, utilize those people that that love you, right? And tell them how you feel, tell them what you're going through, because that's going to be the only way that they're going to know your struggles. If you don't tell them, there's no way of knowing. And just to speak in my situation, my mom worked Monday through Friday. My dad worked Monday through Friday. Now that I'm older, I understand their sacrifices. I didn't understand them there then, right? Yeah. I didn't know, you know, them working so much, them not really being there, my friend being, I didn't know what a Toys R Us was till like I was grown. <laughs> Right. Be them not being able to yeah. provide these certain things. Now I do. Right. But it's really just communicating your struggles and communicating what you're going through, whether it's your parents, whether it's someone at school, whether it's your counselor, whether it's a friend. Right. Because there is people in this world that do care for you. Right. Yeah. And that's always going to be it. Not everybody, but there is people. You just got to use those people. Damn. Mm. <laughs> He's crying already. Look at him. Look I'm at him. <laughs> and that's why I came here, bro. Uh, because really? I love, I love, I love your your space and I love what you guys are doing, bro. Nah, man. Thank you. Because in the we we talked about we talk about it. We talk about it. Like you know, we just we barely just talked about it. Because with Ashley, like almost I think now a year ago, we podcasted in Fontana. Yeah. In my house. And it was just, you know, it was just a camera, you know, my girlfriend. Like we're just chilling. Recording and, and we put out a message, you know, and yeah. it was dope. Now the message just never changed. It's just now the platform, right? Now the audience, right? That now is expanding. People, if people didn't know who you were back then when you started, now they know because of who you are and what your purpose is. We live in our truth and we walk in our truth, no matter what anybody tells us, right? And I'm so glad that you fucking came here, you know, and you represented for you, your wife, your your platform. And people got to know you in a different in a different setting. Right. People like besides those ten second clips of you getting fired on the first day of the job and <laughs> <laughs> you getting in trouble by your wife or whatever, like people got to see you in a different setting of how genuine genuine and real you are. I'ma tell you I'ma tell you this, and I'm and in on here and off of here, that you are literally a most humbling, authentic, very nice, giving, funny dude. Walking in without an intention. Like, you're Appreciate just that you. person, bro. Thank you, thank you. You know and, what I mean? And I thank you, bro, because you gave me the opportunity, right? Like, yeah. at the end of the day, yeah, we do content, me and my wife. And sometimes there's things that I would like to tackle. 
but it's, it's, it's really not that it's unrealistic, but that's not, not you know that's not the space, right? right? It's not the time. It's not the setting. Yeah. It's not the pay, space. Those that know me know what I'm about. Yeah. But you gave me that opportunity to Appreciate spread you. my message and spread you know mental health awareness, comedy, yeah. and 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 you made it. Everybody really here made it comfortable for me to come on and just speak without yeah. you know rehearsing anything right yeah. it was just boom boom let's come let's Whatever. do it this is and the topics let's run through them yeah and 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 i knew what this podcast was about so Appreciate that's why you. i encourage everybody that's watching this podcast is to subscribe to this podcast have right? to comment you know let's start a conversation as to what we spoke about you know subscribe if you want to continue you know hearing these conversations with other people that you might see in social media yeah. or other people that a teacher might be on here one day i'm going to i'm literally going to tell you right now that once this episode is up not just your audience is going to learn a lot about you and about us and not just our audience but everybody listening to is going to get something out of this and that's the whole point right take what you can learn from it use it run with it right because what we talked about today you may not hear it somewhere else because we could have came on some bullshit. We could have came right. on just, hey, what the fuck is your comedy about? What are your videos right. about? What do you do? No, 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 no. That's cool, bro. We could do that in a different setting when we're out yeah. at the quinceañeras, at the bautizos. Mm -hmm. We could do that there. <laughs> but here in this platform, we're making the most uncomfortable conversations comfortable. Right. And we're bringing awareness to mental health. We're bringing awareness to self-love, to care, to every topic that you may not be able to be comfortable talking with anybody else. We just made it comfortable. Yeah, one hundred percent. So, leave us with. Well, can we get a? Can I get a tequila, low key? Can I get a tequila I somewhere? A shot, a shot. I need a shot. I need a shot to end it. <laughs> not me. But, I'm about to drive, bro. <laughs> yeah, not, not my guy. My guy's gonna. My guy's gonna drink whatever he has in the red cup. Most, and, and, most importantly, what I think is just to give him the flowers at the end of the day. Yeah, we gotta give you the flowers, oh, bro. bro. You, man. you know the the thing about here, and we're gonna do this before we take the shot, is giving you the flowers. Everything you've done, right. not just right now that you have how m three million on TikTok, almost half a million on 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 IG, yeah. right? Not that. It's the power that you have in your in your impact with the community that you're about, and the audience that you have, right? Making that impact. Appreciate it. You know what I mean. Yeah, so yeah. I do want to, you know, before we do that, I do want to give it up, man. Giving you the flowers, dog. Thank you. Thank you. you might not seem like. You're something big or anything, but to someone out there, you're an inspiration. You're someone yeah. that they look up to, you know? And yeah. it's, and bro, at the that. end of the day. Have, have you told yourself, like, you're proud of yourself? Uh, not necessarily on the social media aspect. Not, like, proud of yourself but, and everything you're doing. But as far as, like, working with kids, because I've been doing it for so long, and, and seeing, you know, like, you're doing something right. Yeah. It's not the most, you know, as far as financial like rewarding, right? But it is rewarding, and 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 that's why I still continue to do it because I do enjoy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, graduating those kids, helping those kids, and those parents get their kids back, right? Or helping yeah. that kid get a job, or whatever the case is. You know, being that big brother to them, that friend to them. Yeah. And um, so that's where, like, sometimes, like, I, I'm like, yeah. You gotta give yourself whatever. Okay, we're gonna like, we're gonna see Dylan open the. <laughs> hey man. Them, them, them fake teeth are expensive, dog. You better watch out with them teeth. Unless oh. you're going to TJ to get them done, but I can't go to TJ. You can't go to TJ. Yeah. He ain't coming back. I'll let you use my passport. He's re he's returning as uh he's re he's returning as Dominique. Yeah, like just act like you're asleep in the back, you know. Oh, that's Francisco in the back, you know. They'll believe you, dog. I'll make some tats. I'm my tats. guy, my guy's a dreamer, bro. My guy's a dreamer. That's what I love about this guy. But you know. Um, again, everything you're doing, dog, everything you are, you, you and your wife are, are building your empire that you're building, the message that you're getting across, everybody is following, subscribing, like tuning into you yeah. because of who you guys are. Right. You, you cannot fake this. No, I, I don't think you could, man. No, nah, you can, but you're you not going to last long. People, no, exactly. The way social media is, they're going to find that. They're going to figure yeah. that shit out really yeah. quick. Yeah. Um, so is there a quote? that you can leave your audience about believing in yourself to get to this platform or to this position. I think, so, yeah. so let me, let me, let me make it better. I got this. Let me make it better. Whoever is watching that is going through a tough moment, self-doubt, confidence is low. 
you know, not believing that tomorrow there is a brighter day or not believing that at the end of this dark tunnel there is light. There is people that are wondering and wishing that, man, I hope I can hear this, bro. I wish and I hope I can figure this out one day. Yeah. What can you tell that person? So I would tell that person, to be honest, and to go into that quote that you, you, you mentioned, right, is, and, and it came because there is a quote in my head, right, that I do use a lot. I just couldn't, you, you put me in a spot back there, but a quote that I, I love and, and, and I've always used, and it's actually by J. Cole, is the beauty and the struggle. He said it once. He, he might have not been the one that originated that <laughs> quote, but that's where I heard it from, yeah. J. Cole, the beauty and the struggle. Because day to day, there's, you're going to go through those struggles, those speed bumps. You, you're, no matter what, that's life. You're yeah. going to go through it, right? But there's always a beauty in those speed bumps because you're going to learn a lot of different things. The way I learn a lot of different things through those speed bumps, right? You just have to, you know, work, continue, like, focusing on your goals, on what it is that you want to do, right, and and, and perfect that crop. You got to work hard to a certain extent. You definitely do, you know, just don't let those people, you know, bring you down because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to be negative. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of people that are not going to believe in what you're doing. And and people might see us like, oh, man, three million. But, no, there was there was a road that yeah. got us here. There, there was a hundred. There was, there was a thousand. Yeah, there was a lot of fights between me and my wife. Me and my wife don't have, like, oh, that's the the the, the beautiful relationship. Like, no, we, we went through bumps and we figured it out. But it's about figuring it out. And that's where it goes back to, like, Take that and take the beauty and the struggle. There's, 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 there's a reason why you're going through this because you're going to learn something from this. You know what I mean? Damn. Mm. That's the podcast, baby. Yeah. Yeah. My brother. Oh, man. My brother. If you haven't tuned in, make sure you tune in, subscribe, follow, share. Yeah, yeah. Do the sure. dude. Come on, bro. We're, we're trying to get bigger. And the message is there. We're not, we may not be famous, but we're very impactful. Exactly. And we had a very impactful person here. He's being modest, but he's The saying, battles are here, homie. The oh, dogs yeah, are here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the podcast, baby. Yeah, Let's go. Right, Tune right. in. Tune in. Subscribe. Oh, wait. There it is. Oh, did it. Oh, the dogs are all here. Oh, the dogs are calling me. Let's do it.